So I've just cut out uh, this section of track here and I'm ready to start installing uh, the, these two points and I'll take that power supply from, uh, well I'll actually leave that power supply there but I'll take this one out here and I'll move it over here. Next I have disconnected uh, these two wires here. I'll get rid of the, the solder when I do the new connections and I also checked my notes and made sure that I had both these tracks uh, isolated. So the wiring is in place and now I'll need to solder them on and then move on to getting the controller organised. Welcome back to the station. So today is uh, the big event. I have the wiring completed as I said and I've routed the track wire into my R965 and then I've got the same wire which is 14 gauge coming out into one of these little connectors which connects me up to this wall wart plug which as I explained was 12 volt in and 12 volt out so the proof will be in the pudding so what I've done is I've put an old triang on there and uh, let's see what happens okay so I've, I've got the power on and I'm going to turn the controller and see if anything takes place well nothing happened there after a few tests and checking continuity between the wires and the track checking uh, this connection and the plug down there Finally, I've got it working. Well, you see, the problem there is this switch is in the wrong direction. So I'm just going to reverse that first. Just give it a There you go, how's that? It's an old triang. Uh, you can see, and it's not really been, it's been sitting around for a long time. But as you can see, it runs fairly smoothly. And once again, got it going in the opposite direction uh, maybe try it with something that will run a little bit smoother uh, let's get this one out because we know that this will run There you go, look at that, perfect. Except for that. Nice and smooth as it comes around. This is a great example of what John's Amazing Trains, John Chambers, uh, Chams123, uh, was trying to tell us. He was giving us this message that 
you don't need DCC to have great control. All you have to do is manipulate the old Triang R965 controller. And uh, the proof is in the pudding, as John would say. And uh, I hope he's watching wherever he is, because um, this is just uh, magnificent, if I say so myself. A and it's been like, a great success. Oh, just stops a little bit at that one and that one, but we'll get that sorted. Just turn the speed up a little bit and see for the most part it gets through the points. I'll probably have to tweak uh, these two, two points that I've got here uh, that I added in. But you must admit uh, that is just outstanding. Yeah, see it's still sticking at that one and that one, but that's okay. The experiment is a success and uh, personally I'm very happy with it and thanks to Tom and Richard and everybody else who made suggestions and recommendations and uh, gave me positive feedback on what I was trying to accomplish here. Now the interesting thing is, this is on stop. There you go, it goes through once you give it a little bit of power. That was like a steel live action that was going on there. See, look at that, that's just tremendous. You know, I didn't have uh, any long uh, speed track, whatever it's called, because um, they are just uh, the short ones and if they were the longer ones the transition would be so much smoother but you must admit uh, that is terrific and you know if you didn't believe John uh, in his slow moving locomotives uh, this is a testament uh, to what he was professing and as you can see, he was right, and uh, we owe John a lot of thanks for that. And if you need any further information, uh, just get in touch, drop me a note, I'd be happy to give you the appropriate links so that you can do the same. I mean, you get these for $10, $15 here, maybe £10, even £5 in the UK, and it's a very simple uh, modification. So check it out and if you enjoyed this please remember to give me the big thumbs up, you know how it works, uh, I really appreciate the support, thanks very much for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed it, bye for now. Well, thanks for dropping by and I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it was very interesting and I really had to think about what I was doing, checking all the connections, making sure I had continuity. So it was a great exercise to go through. Anyway, um, if you decide to buy one of these little things, um, what you must do is look on the back of it. 
and you'll see a date, and that's a manufacturing date, 16th of May, I think that this one says 1991. <laughs> now, there's a cut-off date, and that cut-off date was when they started producing these in China. There's a different method of converting them. So anyone that was made, if it says made in England, uh, and it does say that Hornby Limited made in England, that's the one you want. And then it's a, a couple of little electronic components, chop this wire off, make, make a little bit of soldering and uh, and then plug it in and it's that simple uh, and it really works a treat so <clears throat> a very very big thank you uh, to John Chambers I know you're out there somewhere John uh, been trying to get hold of you and hope you haven't gone to Australia because that would be a big loss to the community so <clears throat> if anybody knows where John is please tell him to be in touch anyway Go and buy an R965 controller and improve the running of your trains and your DC layout. It's that simple. Bye for now.